very much, everyone. Um, I'm really glad, very happy that you will let me speak in English today because I am the only one that's going to speak in English in these talks. So that's really great uh, because my Chinese is still very mayo, mayo, mayo. <laughs> Sorry, I, I promise I will, I will learn. Um, today, um, I want to talk about creativity and um, let's go to the topic of um, given to us by the TED organizers is the DAO. The DAO is quite interesting because DAO means so many things and especially for Europeans or you know, non-Chinese people, it becomes extremely wide, quite complex. Um, so there are so many things that can be interpreted in many different ways. But for me, uh, one that I picked is direction and another one is method. Direction is really interesting for the reason that um, it's a progressive way. It will take you to your objectives. A method, because as a designer uh, and an artist, uh, is what we use in terms of using uh, the tool for creativity. So those are the two things that for me are quite interesting for interpreting uh, DAO. Um, I really like this picture. Uh, this is my partner and I, and this is a place called Creative Road, which is in a small alleyway in, uh, in London, in the south of London, in an area we, where we used to live. And uh, it's very, very close to the Thames River. Really beautiful place. And we used to hang out there quite often to talk about life, talk about art, talk about design, and also to, to understand why we want to see the world with a different angle. And now I am going to explain you a little bit what I draw, but what I see. Uh, because I draw things thinking that that thing is something that I am going to interpret straight away, but I don't. Normally I try to see other things. When I was little, I, I, was, I was born in a beautiful place called Cadiz in the south of Spain, which is technically an island. And I used to go to the shore, to the beach, and I used to build castles with, the, with the, all the debris coming from the sea. And I waited for the, um, the tide to come up and destroy them. And that's is when I started to believe that I was an artist. So let me show you this. I believe that you will see something like uh, a finger. It could be the middle finger. It could be this finger. But maybe this is something else if we look at it differently. It's the sunset of the beach, on the beach. If you look at it, it's like the moment in which the sun is really big and orange and the waves with a slow motion move around and you get kind of hypnotized. And this one looks like a squiggle. This is the kind of a squiggle that we do when we are speaking on the phone and we have a pen in our hands and the conversation starts to be really boring, very, very little interesting and we start to do this kind of thing. But is this really a squiggle or maybe something else? It's the horizon. It's the horizon when you look far away and you can see this line at the end. It could be the horizon on the desert. It could be the horizon on the savanna in Africa. And this one technically looks like a wheel. It looks like one of those old wheels in the carriage, you know, with horses. But maybe there's something a way more intriguing behind there. It's a chameleon. It's the eye of a chameleon staring at you with this kind of dinosaur eyes when it's changing color. This one is quite obvious, I believe. What can you see here? Perhaps a comb, a classic comb to comb your hair? It could be, but maybe it's something completely different. It's my heartbeat when I'm really excited or I'm a little bit stressed. 
um, what I believe that objects could be. I am a designer and um, I like objects very much. I make things all the time. Let your fingers be your brain. This is, this is my lay motif. I make things all the time. And I, I question very much what objects are made for. I always question if this, for example, is made to move the images, but maybe it could be something else. So I apply this kind of method again and again, but also for objects into the mundane, in the everyday. So this one, for example, I think that you all recognize it. This is a pump, a horn with a pump on the bottom for the bicycles, yeah? So when you're cycling, you can actually pump it and make the sound and stop someone or alert someone. But for me, because the possibility of the object, object that you can pump it up is giving me, I can't imagine that this is a machine, it's a new machine that actually is able to create clouds. I just made a cloud maker. This one, this one is one of this, uh, it's, a pigeon, it's a feather, a feather from a pigeon. The pigeons, you know, that we find in parks and uh, they lose the feathers now and again. But if you pay attention to it and you look with different eyes, what you can see is actually the mountains of Hanghui, for example, and the clouds behind. And you're turning a uh, common pigeon's feather into a new object which is taking you elsewhere. This one I made very many years ago. I really like it because when I was little and I was um, starting to read, I enjoyed very much. I used to get completely caught up in the book. And, and I believe that the characters in the books lived inside of the book. There was another inner wall inside, absolutely amazing. So thinking of this, one day I decide to help the people living in the books um, and made them, aware, made them see the, our wall from the book. So I inserted this pit hole to make these characters participate in our life and somehow to aspire us. What about if vegetables and fruits could become spray bottles. Can you imagine that a banana could become a spray, that you could spray banana a spray all over the place? Um, when a little twist makes an artistic manifestation. So let me explain this one. A little twist. Things happen when there are twists. You know, something moves, something breaks, something uh, a domestic accident, for example, can create, can provoke new ways of understanding uh, the world around you and make artistic manifestations. So I chose this image to explain the one that is coming next of this one. So one day I, w I made some really very nice soup at home and uh, I was carrying the plate with the soup, two plates, because one was really hot, so I placed it on top of the other. Uh, and I was carrying the spoon in my mouth because I was holding these two plates really hot and accidentally I dropped the spoon and I broke the plate and then I tried to turn it over to remove it and then all of a sudden I left it on the table because I had just created accidentally a canal. So between one side of the plate and the other I accidentally made a little pathway, a little shortcut, and uh, a new river was born. When I was living in London, I lived in a very nice house, and uh, I lived in many places in London, because in London you have to live in many places, unless you are rich. So I lived in this beautiful place, very close to my job, and uh, I had a little garden which I loved very much because it was my place to relax. It was my place to, to come home and, and think about the day and reflect. And in order to get that moment and that mood, what I used to do is look after my garden. So I used to water my garden every day. And I found lots of pleasure doing that. 
But the most annoying part of watering the garden, and I'm sure that some of you know this, is to roll back the horse after that, yeah? Because it, it, tends, it tends to twist. So to put it all back together, it takes a long time. So what we all normally do is just throw it to the grass until tomorrow. And that day, I remember that I finished my watering and then I throw the horse and I looked back, uh, sorry, I looked back and, and I saw that it had made this funny twist and it became a yin yang. And next to that shape, I had two pots for my plants, that white one and the black one. And I just placed them there and I created this yin yang accidentally. And this is the image from a very good friend of mine, John. He's an architect. He works here in the architecture department. And he posted this image a few weeks ago in a social media platform. And I really liked it because um, I, I like architecture very much. And also because of the sharp edge of the building in contrast with this beautiful cloudy sky of Suzhou. Um, I, I really enjoyed this image. And I remember that I was walking to work. And my telephone, of course, is a smartphone. And it twisted accidentally. Well, it's what a, a good phone should do, yeah? So I was walking and it twisted the image. And all of a sudden, this accident, this twist, oops, sorry. This twist made a completely different image. It made an envelope, an envelope with a beautiful cloudy sky, like those old envelopes that we used to use for air mail. I guess that many of you recognize this lady, it's Ophelia from Hamlet. And I went to Shanghai a few weeks ago, and I went to a museum in which they're exhibiting uh, this artwork from John Everett that I wanted always to see in real life. I never saw the real painting, and this was a chance to see Ophelia. And the painting is actually quite small. It's not, I've, I've, I always imagined this painting as something pretty big, but no, it's actually pretty small. And there were loads of people looking at, at this, uh, Ophelia, and they were all taking pictures. And I, of course, wanted to take a picture myself. So I was there with my telephone trying to, to capture the painting in full, but it was impossible. And all of a sudden, I took a picture of someone taking a picture. And it made me think that uh, I was witnessing the double death of Ophelia. So she died in the painting once, and now she was dead in the digital dimension. So somehow these accidents make you create new walls and new ways to understand our surrounding. So today what I want to transmit to you all of you is that um, the, world is, the world is not only what we see, but how we want to see it. And you just need to practice a little bit, um, perhaps provoke some accidents and make uh, your surrounding be completely different. Thank you very much.